What impact will Ryan Paling make as a rookie this year, and could he be the first-line center the Canadians are looking for? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scattering Report. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Ryan Paling, what an interesting story. Of course, the 2017 draft selection 25th, and in his only uh, NHL appearance, one uh, game played three goals on only three shots, and then, of course, completing it with the shootout goal as well to win the game. What a start to a career, three goals, three shots. He's had a ton of experience in terms of high-level pressure for St. Cloud State. Most recently, they were the regular season champions. And to be able to perform at the level that he has, being the leadership-type player that he brings, also he's been able to play with both of his brothers at St. Cloud State. So much talent goes into Ryan Paling's game. So we're going to dive into this, what he brings, what his comparison and potential are, and what it might look like in Montreal this season with Ryan Paling. So if you're new to the channel, feel free to check out my content. Yesterday we did a very interesting scouting report on Emil Bemstrom, and we also have a mock draft on the 2020 NHL draft as well. Comment below which prospect from 2020 you would like to see a review and a scouting report of first. Let's get right into the content, and if you enjoy it, hit that subscribe button. Feel free to check out our Patreon and also like the video. So Ryan Paling, he's 20 years old, 6'2", 185, and he currently has three NCAA seasons to his credit going to the NHL next season. Like I said, already played a game there, and only 20 years old to be able to have those three NCAA seasons. The reason he was able to have three already and not two is because he took a ton of summer classes to get ahead to be able to be a freshman when his brothers were at college as well, even though they were a year older than him. This shows amazing work ethic, amazing ability, and as one of the youngest players in NCAA hockey, if not the youngest, when he was a freshman, he was extremely productive, 35 games played, 7 goals, 6 assists, 13 points. This is some of the better showing statistically that we would see from 18 and 19 year olds in terms of an average level scoring to put that up as a 17 year old, truly impressive. He also played for the USDP program with guys like Robert Thomas, Quinn Hughes, and Brady Kachuk. Nine games played there, four goals, six points. So Ryan Paling going into that draft year was showing that he is an elite level two way talent, someone that might be nominated for a Selk in the future. Offensively, there were some questions on what that upside is, and then skating was considered a slight issue. Real Juniors under 18 that year, seven games played, three goals, two assists, five points. But if we flash forward to this year, 36 games played St. Cloud State as a junior, eight goals, 23 assists, 31 points. Also 34 penalty minutes and a plus 12. What Ryan Paling brings, like I said, is amazing work ethic. He's a natural leader, and it makes a lot of sense that Paling in the future might be a captain of a team, whether it's Montreal, whether it's something else. He also has amazing puck skills, and in a lot of ways, that's because of a great vision from the back end, along with great hockey IQ, which allows him to have amazing decisions. He's so good at stealing turnovers from others. He's a very good two-way player, great pivot role in the transitional game. He can play physically, 6'2", 185, and he has very good vision, like I mentioned, from the back end with good skating. Skating was considered an issue, not anymore. He battles in the corners very effectively, but his two best assets out of all of this is probably work ethic and leadership, and everything else revolves around that. But in terms of hockey assets, it's very good acceleration and amazing balance. So this is someone that is extremely balanced on his skates and someone that plays overall the game in a very smooth transitional way, battles in the corners very well as a result, and has very good reach. And if you look at what he did this year internationally, what a story. Uh, World Juniors under 20 for USA, seven games played, five goals, three assists, eight points. He led the team in goals as well as points. Faraby had five points, Walsham four points. Jack Hughes had no goals, four assists for four points. Paling obviously a year older than Faraby Wallstrom, two years older than Hughes, but still performing at an elite level, five goals, eight points. He also was the MVP of the World Juniors under 20. And this is what I want to focus on. If we go back and we look at all the past MVPs of the World Juniors, there are so many great names and just popular names that Ryan Paling is now among. Most recently, Casey Middlestat, Thomas Shabbat, Jesse Pujarvi. But before those, we see Philip Forsberg, John Gibson, Kuznetsov, Braden Chen, Eberle, Tavares, Price, Malkin, Bergeron, Parise, 
Flurry. We also see Michael Maleri and Steve Mason. What talented players to now be in the same conversation as Shabbat, Forsberg, Kuznetsov, Tavares, Malkin, and Bergeron, as well as others. What an elite group of players. Ryan Paling is now a part of that group. And I think the comparison to Bergeron there makes a lot of sense. Both are two-way players. Both have offensive upside. For Ryan Paling now to be selected in that group as an MVP, this shows the elite upside he has. These players are all first and second line players. Most of them are first line players. Three first line centers there. In his draft list one year, 36 games played, 14 goals, 17 assists, 31 points. That's what we can see from him. It's going to be a similar amount of goals to assists. Definitely the playmaker this year, 8 goals, 23 assists. But this is someone that has a great shot, and when he uses it, it's highly effective. We saw only three shots at the NHL level coming in only 10, 11 minutes of ice time. So effective with those three goals. World Juniors under 20 that year, one goal, three points. So to jump to those five goals, eight points, what a statistic jump. The potential for Ryan Paling is a second-line center. I don't necessarily see him as a first-line center, and the reason is I don't think he has 70-point potential like someone like Bergeron who brings that two-way asset or even higher like someone like Tavares or Malkin. I don't see that. What I do see, however, is a top-five two-way center in the NHL, someone that's going to be among the Bergerons, the Koivus, as well as the Kopitars and the Barkovs in terms of two-way ability. This is what Ryan Paling brings. And if we're talking about comparable centers statistically, certainly Ryan O'Reilly comes up, someone who's extremely effective in the two-way game, one of the best in the league, but also effective in goal scoring as well as the offensive game. But a true comparison, I think, is a mixture of a better Miko Koivu and a little bit worse Anzi Kopitar, but with a better goal-scoring touch. There really isn't a direct comparison for Ryan Paling in the NHL, very much a unique player. And the reason is he has amazing leadership, amazing work ethic, and that really screams Ryan, uh, really screams Miko Koivu to me. He also has a very good two-way game, which, like I said, brings all of these comparisons. The goal-scoring, though, is much better than a lot of two-way players. We don't see Miko Koivu being much of the goal scorer, so certainly a stronger comparison than that. Miko Koivu for the career, 973 games, only 201 goals for 668, 688 points, most points in wild history, most assists in wild history, soon to be most goals in wild history, for 0.71 points per game. Also, 564 penalty minutes. And I think there is some comparison there. I think Ryan Paling will put up a decent amount of penalty minutes. Whereas Kopitar, in 1,003 games, only had 278 penalty minutes. And so that comparison doesn't fit. Kopitar, 6'4", 223. Similar size there. Whereas Koivu, 6'2", 216. And Kopitar, 312 goals, 888 points for 0.89 points per game. So there's a similar comparison there. Kopitar brings great speed, hands, and vision. And I see that with Paling as well. He also has a very good two-way game. But the skating on Kopitar isn't as good as Koivu, I don't think, at least in the corners. And that's where I see more of Ryan Paling. So there's an interesting comparison here. But then I also see the ability to drive a line and be a fundamental elite asset in a line like someone like Barkov that I don't see in Koivu. And I do see in Kopitar. So there's a very interesting comparison in terms of what we can consider Ryan Paling to be. He also has the ability to play on the wing. So to be able to play in Montreal with someone like Max Domi, who can be a left winger, was in Arizona, but then in Montreal can be a winger. Same with Jonathan Drouin. So many options there, allowing Ryan Paling to do whatever fits the team best. And if we look at the three main centers that Montreal has now, we have Deneau, Kalkinyemi, and Ryan Paling. And all three of these are two-way players. Deneau is proving that he, he may not necessarily be a number one center, but certainly a top six center in terms of his ability to be a two-way player. Kalkin Yemi is someone that's going to continue to grow, had over 30 points in that rookie year as just an 18-year-old, going to be a very effective player, could be that future number one center. But Ryan Paling brings more offensive upside than Kalkin Yemi. Kalkin Yemi might be the better two-way player, the better defensive player, but Poling, uh, Paling of the three, clearly in my mind, the best goal scorer. This is someone that's going to be 20 to 25 goals, per season, and then a total of probably 55 to 60 points. So we're not talking out-of-the-roof goal scoring, out-of-the-roof assists. His three goals, three shots, most likely an anomaly. Very good scoring there, but we're not going to see someone like him put up 40 goals. 
that's not most likely what we see. And the reason is, in his NCAA seasons, we saw eight goals. Before that, we saw 14. Before that was seven. So he's never been much of a goal scorer, but he has had jumps in it internationally with seven goals in the draft year. Excuse me, uh, three goals in the draft year, one goal, draft plus one, five, draft plus two. So there is some goal scoring elements there, and I think 20 or 25 goals is very possible. His main issue is he doesn't shoot enough. And when he gets that shot off, it's going to work for him. Bit of a surprise in his NHL game. He put up as many shots as he did in three. But if he can continue to do that, it'll be very effective for him. And so with these three two-way centers, as well as having Domi and Drew in, who can be centers, what does the team look like in terms of lines? Well, I think the top line, you don't want to mess with Deneau and Gallagher. I think it's a good duo there. But I do think there needs to be a shift in terms of who is playing with him. I don't think Tatar should play there. I think rather Domi should shift from the center spot to play to the top line. Adding in a power forward like Domi is going to make Domi to no Gallagher a very effective top line, going to be a top 10, top 15 unit. Second line allows you to have Tatar there with Kotkin Yemi. I think move Kotkin Yemi up to that second line and have Jonathan Drouin there. Going to be some nice playmakers on that line. Going to need a bit of goal scoring there. And so Domi might be the answer to shift him to that second line, put Tatar back up top. But I think Tatar can handle that role. Third line is when it gets interesting. I think Ryan Paling should be that center. Being a rookie, being a two-way player. Now, he is older than Kotkin Yemi, might be able to adjust quicker to the offensive game, even though he's a rookie. I think Nick Suzuki will be in that spot on his wing, allowing some goal scoring there and so much speed there, so much agility. Then you have Arturi Lettinen, Paul Byron, and uh, Armia. The question is, who takes that spot? And I think it's going to be Lettinen, depends how he develops. But I think Paling Suzuki, you don't want to break that up. Two rookies, have them work together. Dano Gallagher, you don't want to break up. And I think Druin and Kotkaniemi, you don't want to break up. And so the question is, where do you put Domi Tatar Lekkinen? I think you have to shift him in in that way. And if Paling is playing with elite line mates, it's going to elevate his game further. We saw at the World Juniors under 20, to be able to play with Jack Hughes, Walsham, and Farabee really elevated his game. To play in the USDP program with guys like Brady Kachuk, Robert Thomas, Quinn Hughes, it elevated his game. When he went to the NCAA place, uh, St. Cloud State, yes, he got to play with his uh, two brothers, twins, but there wasn't as much talent to elevate his game. And so his numbers overall, there wasn't a massive statistical jump that people were expecting. Certainly close, but going from half a point per game to almost a point per game, but then no real jump after that, 31 points to 31 points, but then six less goals. The question was, has Ryan Paling plateaued? He's a two-way player, but is he going to end up being a third-line center type, someone like Riley Shahan? That was the expectation. And so until his NHL game, people would have considered Ryan Paling to be a very solid third-line center for Montreal. It makes a lot of sense having who they already have. He's no call can Yemi, but he can be a great third-line center. Now the question is, could Ryan Paling be truly a top-six center? Does he have 20-25 goal potential? Would he allow the team to shift him to the wing and then be the wing of Kotkin Yemi? There's a lot of questions there. It's a very fluid group. And I think when it comes to the power play, we're going to see Paling shifting to the wing. Good spot for him there. Kotkin Yemi, the playmaker down the middle, put him on that power play with guys like Suzuki, Drew and Domi, Paling. There are some, op- some options right there. But then on that defensive side, the question is who goes there? Most likely Shea Weber. So a lot of questions. It's going to be a very fluid system for Montreal. But what Paling does is he stabilizes it through very consistent play, amazing work ethic, and he's a natural leader. I think within a couple seasons, we'll see him carrying the A on his jersey. As Shea Weber gets older, we might see the C transition to him. And the team is going to build around him. The team is going to build around Kalkanyemi as well. The team is really building around the centers right here. And I think it's going to be a very good stabling block for them. Long term, Kalkin Yemi might be that number one center. But Paling Denault is certainly going to be there. And with the talented wingers that they have, Domi, Druin, Tatar, Suzuki, Gallagher, this is the way that the team can build. So comment below your thoughts. What do you think is the offensive upside of Ryan Paling? Could he be more offensive as Kalkin Yemi? That's what I'm proposing. But is his two-way game as good as Kalkin Yemi? Certainly close. Subscribe if you enjoyed this content, hit that thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next video.